Hey there, everybody. Welcome to our review of Power Book 2 Ghost, Episode 9, the penultimate one of the season. This is when all the crazy stuff happens with all the shows yeah, now. It's true. This episode, like, it, it gives you legitimate questions to think about. Like, everything is starting to unravel to a certain extent. And it sets up the big hole. Is Tariq gonna really take the fall for everything? I have an... I have an idea about what Power Book 2 is trying to do here, and we're, we're going to get to that. But before we do, if you guys enjoy this video, subscribe to the channel because the finale is coming up very soon. We've got other stuff like Snowfall coming down the pipeline here. Yep, and Vikings on Wednesday for anyone who's watching that like me. I love yeah. that show. Yeah, you guys don't want to miss that. And if Also, if you're enjoying what we're doing here, check out our Patreon. We have a link in the description. Mm -hmm. We do Q&A videos last Sunday of every month over there. We're going to record one of those today, and we have some other benefits, and it's just a great way to show <laughs> that you love what we do here yeah. that much more. Yeah. Okay, so can I lay my big idea on you yeah, here? Yeah, let's hear it. Let's hear it. Okay, so I feel like this episode of Power Book 2 is the entire team showing you, hey, look, we're not being Power Book 1 anymore. Like, they really, really worked hard in this episode to be like, see, Tariq, he's not like Ghost, even though he spent the majority <laughs> of this season slowly and surely turning into Ghost. Yeah, he really did. I mean, I wanted to see this season with Tariq be a little bit different than Ghost. And I know, you know, a lot of us end up getting a lot of qualities from our parents, whether we like it or not. But he's at that age where he's, you know, going to rebel against his parents. And he, you know, we watched him all through power trying to rebel against Ghost to the point that he killed Ghost. So with him being so young and now he's on his own, everything that's happened with his, with his mom, I thought for a little while he would try to make different decisions like maybe not lying to Braden about everything <laughs> but you know he really is sort of taking that same path but if, if finally in this episode and I'm not saying he is like stopping the lying and stopping some of the nonsense at least I feel like he took a step forward like he gave Braden a tiny ounce of truth he, actually, he gave him quite a bit of truth. I was kind of surprised. True. I mean, he's obviously not going to be like, by the way, I killed my dad. But, <laughs> yeah. I mean, he did tell him everything about Riley, everything about Sax being her, you know, uncle, all of that. Like, that was a lot of information. And I actually don't know why he didn't just tell him at the beginning. Because this conversation went how I thought it was going to go, which is... Wayne's not going to start digging in deeper of like, oh, did, that means that you killed your dad or you had something to do with your dad or anything like that. Brayden's not really digging that deep into stuff. He just wants loyalty. Yeah, Brayden cares, I think, about just a, a few different things here. Number one, are you loyal to me? Number two, are we going to make money? And number three, are we still going to be bros? Like, those are the things that, yeah, I don't think Brayden cares what you did in the past as long as it does not impact Brayden at all. Yeah, I agree. I think he's, Brayden's on his path to really just become his own guy. And he thinks that, you know, Tariq is going to be a way to do that, a road to do that. But he does want that loyalty. So I'm glad that there was that moment where Tariq actually opened up and told him some of the truth about stuff because I really do want to watch this show be different than what I watched with Power. On a scale of 1 to 10, how happy were you to see Riley in the promo for the finale? It's a 0 out of 10 for me, <laughs> but I mean I knew that she was probably going to come back after Tariq said what he said. So I, I figured that was going to be coming back, that at some point Brayden was going to be like, what is happening? I was wondering if you were going to go with the zero or like a negative number. Or zero. Somewhere. No, just nah. See, okay. You? 10 out of 10 uh, no, no, no. <laughs> Yeah, everyone. Clearly, I, I, I'm going to dye what's left of my hair pink in solidarity with Riley. No, Riley's awful. I, I don't know what's going to happen with Riley. But, you know, we see Tariq start to change with Brayden. But at the end of the episode, we then see... Tariq actually go and hire Tamika and come I love clean. Tamika, I'm so glad she's back. T 
Tamika, one of the few people in the world of power who seems to have an element of sense about her at almost every point. Yeah, she's really smart, and she's a really smart character, and, like, I love that whole, give me a dollar, all right, now I'm your attorney, did you do it? It was nice to just see that moment where he was like, I did. Yeah. And he has talked about coming clean a lot for a long time, so it wasn't too shocking that he said, you know, I'm going to take a stand, I'm just going to put it all out there. The only reason he hasn't is because his mom has told him not to over and over and over again, and he loves his mom, so he's not going to do it. But I think he's really at a point that he just wants to be out there and things are going to fall where they're going to fall. That whole speech that he gave to Monet, at first I was like, okay, is he just manipulating her? Or is there something else that's coming with this where he's just... I'm hurting everybody around me. And you saw that sequence yeah. of all the people that he's hurt. And I think it is weighing on him. I think it's very hard to constantly be in this position where Tariq has been since we first met him, really, where someone is always manipulating him or telling him what to do, whether it is Tasha. And Tasha's intentions aren't always bad, but, no. you know, she's been there with that. We've seen Ghost be there with that. We've seen Kanan be there with that. Like, all these people are constantly sort of being like, Tariq, this is who you're going to be. This is the life you're going to live. And I think this episode is Tariq really being like, you know what? I'm going to live my own life. And if that causes me to go to jail for a crime that I actually committed, then, you know, so so be it. Yeah, I feel like Tariq is just hitting this corner where he's ready to take the power back for himself to be like... I want to just be who I'm going to be. And that's why I really like this relationship with Brayden because the two of them are sort of on that same path where they just want to be who they're going to be without family influence or outside influence. They just want to be on the path that they want to be on and figure out who they are, which I think a lot of us are on that path at 18. Yeah, and like I think... With a little bit of trust, eventually comes a lot of trust. And I, I think eventually Brayden's going to learn more about some of the secrets Tariq is sort of holding on to. But he's not going to all of a sudden sort of just wake up and be like, you know, Ebenezer Scrooge in A Christmas Carol, where he's a completely different person after being visited by the three ghosts. The only ghost Tariq gets to see. Well, I don't know. We could do a whole You're ghost of that. Christmas past with Kanan <laughs> no and Ghost kidding. and all of that. But, you know, we, we'll forget about that. But yeah. It was nice to sort of just see some beginnings of trust here. Now, do you think, going into this finale, Tariq is going to jail? I say zero out of ten. <laughs> yeah, Tariq's not going to jail. No. We've, we've already had Tasha in jail. We've had Ghost in jail. We're not going to have another <laughs> extended prison arc with Tariq now. Oh my goodness, please don't put Tariq in jail. I do not want to watch next season where he's just in jail. It's enough for right now. And... With the way that Tariq's character has played out in Power and in Power Book 2, things kind of have a way of working out for him. Like, he, he's had troubles, obviously, but when it comes to sort of the business side of things, things have worked out for him all right. You know what's really interesting to me, and I've just thought of this, is that in some ways... It's sort of like, here's Tariq on one extreme of, I sometimes stumble into good luck and find my way out of problems. Yeah, he does. And then, on the other side of this, they're almost like the Joker to each other's Batman is Cooper Sacks, who somehow, some way, this guy stumbles into all sorts of either luck or just at least survival. Yeah, I'm really wondering if he is going to be the person that ends up taking the fall of this. Because I think that... Tasha is going to be cleared. I think that Tariq is going to be all right, but someone else is going to come in. And this is where I'm still waiting for Tommy to show up. And it is, I figured if that was going to happen, it was going to happen in the finale. And I'm wondering if there's going to be something with that and Sax that all kind of works out here. I'm always just in such so many minds about this because... It makes sense for Sax to be the person to take the fall because it keeps all of our main characters out of jail. It sort of ties things up neatly. But I don't want Sax to go to jail. I want him on the outside complaining and fighting with people and just being somewhat of like an idiot savant at times. The thing is, is 
once Tasha's cleared and Tariq is cleared, then what purpose does Sax have going into the next season? It sort of feels like this is the time to either tie him up where he's like, okay, case is over, I'm done. Or he's the person who goes down for it and then we get Sax in jail next, <laughs> next season. Are we going to have a Sax prison arc? I don't no, think that's right? going to happen. No, but I'm just not sure how after... When this is tied up, how Sax is going to really be part of this story anymore. I think it's going to be curious. If they do decide to go the route of, okay, we're going to make sure that Sax is the person responsible for killing Ghost. Like, how do you get from point A to point B with that? Like, we know now Sax has burned another pretty big bridge now in Davis, which, you know, Sax continues to go forward with the trial. Good on him, but doesn't exactly nail what happened here. It's not like Davis fully betrayed him or anything. No, it's not. But I could see, you know, the DNC deciding that if they can pin this on Sachs, Sachs is someone who's a big enough profile that takes all the heat off of everything they need to with Ghost and all that, because that is really all they care about. So, I mean, it could work in their favor as well. Sax has a little bit of ghost in him, too, in that Zach, Sax is completely incapable of having anyone around him either like him or trust him for a long period of time. It's like, he's pretty much burned Davis now. Davis isn't going to go back and no, leave with him burned. after this. See, Stephen Ott could care less about Cooper Sax. He will punt him into the nearest pit as soon as possible. Yeah, I was glad, though, to see that the whole Davis-Paula storyline is done. I mean, when that first came in episodes ago, where I was like, oh, another married guy having an affair. I was just like, oh, we've already been down this road yeah. with this. Like, where is this going? And it was nice to actually see Paula just straight up be like, no, and I'm out, and it's done, and goodbye. Because that's not what happened in Ghost. So it was nice to see it take another turn with, you know, instead of like what happened with Ghost and Angela, where she just kept coming back and coming back, that finally, you know, Paula's just like, nope. <laughs> I should put like a flashing warning that there are puns ahead now because uh, prepare oh, yourselves there's, there's over. More. Okay, here we okay, go. So, I have my hard hat on. Okay, we're we're going into the scenes here with Epiphany, who is going to be the surprise witness. Paula's really the person who sort of turns things around here yep. and finds a way to inform Tariq of some of what's going down. Tariq also ends up being there at her place, well, the place that she is staying, and he's ready to do what Tasha has told him to do. But then Tariq has a wait for it, an epiphany that he can send Epiphany off rather than shooting her and achieve things his way. I really like that scene with Epiphany because she really was clueless of what Tariq was doing there. She was just talking to him like, hey, how's it going? Yeah, this is going yeah. on and, uh, you know, whatever, whatever. And I like that it came across that way that she wasn't like, oh, no, what is Tariq doing here? And that she was able to sort of stumble into some of her own luck by being on like yeah you know if i could just leave i would leave because i really don't want any part of this for you guys yeah and she didn't deserve to die like she's not gonna be like some criminal mastermind in the world of power moving forward she can go off into i don't know she can go hang out with tommy wherever tommy ends up i don't know yeah and i don't really need to see right now sort of in Tariq's career him just killing more people i mean the people that he's killed so far have been for uh, bigger reasons than this of course, Tariq deciding to give her the money. Like, there were two legitimate scenes where I thought something really, really terrible was going to happen involving Monet. Number one, and I'm sure we'll talk more about this in oh, a minute, yeah. where Monet visits Gary. But then number two, when Monet's got that gun in Tariq's face after she realizes that he uh, used the money elsewhere. I assumed that Monet was going to do nothing. And the reason why <laughs> is because it has been now set up for me that Monet is not really going to do anything. Like when that whole stuff happened with Kane and she was on the floor and he put his hand out, that was the moment for me. That was the moment that I thought she was going to deal with it. It was going to be so bad. We were going to see exactly what she was capable of. And she didn't. And Lorenzo came in and he dealt with it. And then I was like, oh, that kind of like took a lot of power away from her. For me as a viewer, made her look a little bit weaker than I thought she was going to be. I really wanted to see her deal with that. 
Then it was like all the stuff sort of with Kane after that. Eh, threw him out. Okay, well, you threw him out. Now he's like running some stuff with a little <laughs> guap and doing all this. Like she didn't really control that situation no. either. So by the time it came to that where she had a gun on Tariq, I was just like, she's not going to shoot Tariq. Like she's she's not doing that. And I'm not saying that she's not shooting anybody because we've seen that happen. But when it comes to people who are like, really important none of that is happening with her yeah it's like they want to show her that she's threatening and that she is sort of this mastermind but they're not they're not putting her i think in enough positions where she can sort of follow through on what she's threatening to do yeah especially even with that carry stuff i mean she went to the office and i was and again i was already like well she's not going to do anything because we've seen her deal with things you know not as strongly with force very often and not in really serious situations here so that's not gonna happen carrie's not gonna die in a situation which she didn't but i mean in that type of situation i get why monet didn't do that if you know carrie has said something and now carrie is dead yeah. then like who's the number one suspect yeah, and killing her in her office probably is going to create a mess, probably going to create more problems. With that being said, I am not going to sit here and say that I think 100% Carrie is safe in the finale. I'm not sure if she's going to heed these warnings or not because she feels like one of these people who just like wants to get to the bottom of things. Yeah, I mean, that was kind of crappy what she did to Zeke, too, where she was like, listen, my career's on the line. We have this big secret. You could take me down and ruin my life, so tell me your secrets, and now I'm going to go and ruin your life. She is the worst. Zeke, l listen. I Zeke did not give her permission to do that. I didn't see it. Maybe it happened off screen, but it didn't feel right. He said no. I... I get that, Zeke, you don't want to be with sort of the sort of what people would expect from you romantically. You want to have a different sort of life. You want to kind of divert it. That, that's great, but Carrie, it's not it for you here, Zeke. You got to go find someone else. <laughs> Carrie is just, she's looking out for Carrie, and I think she's overly curious to the point where she's going to cause more problems for you. Also, I just don't like watching Carrie all that much, so. Carrie, and this really sucks, because I really like this actress a I know, lot. I know. Like, a lot. I was really excited when I heard that she was cast on the show. She is fantastic. This character, the writing for this character has, somebody has dropped the ball on it. Like, I don't know anything really about her except that she has this love addiction that they brought up at the beginning and then never talked about ever again. And that it seems to be her whole purpose on this show is she's hooking up with Jabari or she's hooking up with Zeke or she's, you know, causing these kinds of like problems or just, you can trust me no but you really can't like there's just not enough meat on this bone with this character yeah and you know she's still there and it seems like she's still gonna try to find a way to cause some problems and i'm sure jabari is gonna be like whoa 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 if someone is gonna take the credit for like busting this caper on campus it's gonna be me because you know jabari is a really big fan of jabari yeah he, and he's still so creepy what are you doing here i was sitting in my office in the dark writing <laughs> what what okay it's, jabari gotta go he it really sets the mood man. for me man oh my goodness I, this He's, he's so creepy and again it's sort of that writing for that character i think they just the problem is is these characters don't have enough to do yeah and it's weird that they are, they're at like seemingly a pretty big school but it often feels like it's sort of like Tariq and laura and jabari and carrie that they're all like some like weird like 40 person campus and like that is all of the school yeah it's just, none of the school stuff works as well as the rest of the stuff on the show. I mean, luckily, we've got a lot of really other great stuff on the show. Yes, there's a lot of really good stuff on the show. But yeah, the the school stuff I'm not as interested in. But I'm very interested in everything that's going on with Monet and her family. I'm really interested in, in how this is all going to wrap up with Tasha, with Tariq. If he's really going to go up there and say he did it. something I don't think so. I think that's a 0 out of 10. <laughs> yeah. I think he's right ready to but i think that you know tamika's gonna come up with something else let's talk about my guy kane here for a minute because kane i've said this all season he just wants to be loved like kane yeah is, he does he's so insecure in a lot of ways and i think that's how 
this whole mess really starts. He's like, I want to be king of the streets, but it's also like, okay, well, I don't want to take anything away from Monet at the same I time. Know. <laughs> he just wants to have like his own little corner of of his own self proclaimed paradise, and then Lil Guap shows up with like all this stuff, and he's just like, whoa, 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 let's wait a gosh darn minute here. Yeah, no, I. Kane is the most fascinating character on this show, and he really is a guy who just wants the love and respect from his family, and the more paths he takes, the worse he makes it every single time. Even when he's trying to do the right thing, when he saw those drugs come in, he was like, no, 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 this is, you know, from Monet, this is not happening, how did this happen, I need to warn her, like, he's trying his best still, even though she kicked him out of the family, you can't even mention his name, and he's still like, no, no, I got to protect my family. I got to find a way to, to do right by them. Yeah, I want my own little thing going on. But Monet just needed to give him a little bit more to do in the family. And this all would have been okay. Like, eventually he may have been like, I need to be the leader. But he wasn't necessarily asking for that at that point. He just wanted something more, a little more responsibility. And that could have been okay. And that's sort of the tragic part of this, is that I think so much of this is easily avoidable, and it just comes down to Kane feeling like he's being phased out and not appreciated enough, yes. and he got in his head, and he got in too deep, and he started causing problems. And I get where he's coming from on that. It's really hard when you're... You're all in on this business. Kane is all yes. in on this business. And then he's got his two siblings and neither of them want anything to do with this business. So, but having, you know, Monet then focus in on his two siblings like that to be like, I'm going to give you the power. You don't want it. I don't care. You don't want it. And here's Kane being like, I want it. I'm here for you. I, yep. I know I'm a wild card, but maybe you can give me something else to do. I'm loyal. I love you guys. Yeah. I'm all in. Like... He's right there. So I get where he's coming from when it comes to that family dynamic of just wanting to be more part of it and showing his commitment. Kane, you just got you just got around the wrong people. You trusted the wrong people. You, you, now you got like Rico, everything that's going on with the shootout. That whole beginning, watching him with Lil Guap and making him put his own crew into barrels was dark it was really dark <laughs> and, this episode was... and then there was that little smile when they had like the the angle from outside the barrel like that and you see kane looking in being like yeah Can... i'm doing this <laughs> this episode started dark and ended dark because now we're like okay well, let's also just have a giant shootout now where Tariq can get out of almost getting shot by monet <laughs> yep and then also we can see drew <sighs> decide <laughs> Oh, Monet wants me to be the guy now. I'm going to be the hero and stand up while, you know, machine guns are being fired into this. Drew, why? Uh, okay, so that was the part of the episode where I was like, as it was happening and all the shooting was happening, I'm like, this is crazy. This is like really crazy. I can't believe this is happening sort of thing. And then when he was like, oh, I'm going to go to the back and get a piece. I'm like, okay. First I thought, well, how much time does he really have? This is sort of like a, a drive-by that's happening here. Does he really even have enough time to go back, yeah. get a piece, sneak around the back? They're going to be gone by then. Like, this is quick. But then you're going to stand up? Like, that was really weird to me. I was like, this guy is so much smarter than this. We've seen this. And even in the last episode, we've seen him take more control than this. I know it's a crazy situation. Bullets are flying everywhere, but bullets are flying everywhere. You stayed down. I was surprised he didn't just, you know, crawl across the floor, try to get to the back. He would have been okay. Yeah. I feel Why, like... Drew? <laughs> We've all played enough Metal Gear Solid to know how to handle these situations. It's right? like, Drew, I, I, I can give you some tips. Not that I've been in a lot of shootouts personally, but, you know, good news is I think he's going to be okay. Yeah. He's in the hospital. Not so good news for Ramirez because Kane's just mad, and I think Kane just was sort of like a, I want to shoot somebody, and I want to feel like this is not all my fault, so you're going to be the fall guy now. Yeah, and it also made sense that it's him because he's sort of kind of a little bit adjacent to the family with Monet, and Kane just got totally like, 
you know what? You were already out of the family, but now you're extra out of the family. I was just like, okay, he's already out of the family, but you know how to hurt him. He wants to really be part of the family. And he's like, you're extra out. You're never, ever coming back. So hitting people that are coming into the family and he's no longer part of it, it makes sense. Here's the bad news. You guys have killed the one connection to the police you really had at this point. Who's going to bail you out now, Kane? Who's going to bail all these people? They're all in. Everyone is just screwed now entering the finale. That is what I feel. Entering the finale, the biggest thing I want to see is just everything that's happening with Tasha. That needs to be the focus of this more than anything else. I want to see Tariq in court. I want to see everything that's going to happen with Tasha. I want to see Sax probably go to jail. And I need to see Tommy show up <laughs> or call or something. I need to see most of that minus the Sax going to jail part. I want I want Sax to realize it's all coming at him and then him just like run away and escape. And then somewhere I, I can envision at least... That Sax is still a part of the power universe. Maybe people want Sax dead. I need to continue hating him. If I don't have him, who do I have? I just think if he doesn't go to jail, we're probably never going to really see him again except in cameos. This is the way to keep your guy Sax on the okay. show. <laughs> Why are my guy Sax and Kane? No, Kane is my guy. Oh, okay. I don't remember who we're, who we're claiming ownership who anymore. All right. Well, I'm you know claiming ownership of Kane. I think he's so fascinating. All right, well, let's just hear from you guys. Who do you think is going to die in the finale? Do you... Carrie, Carrie. Uh, no, we're, we're not changing. <laughs> also, <laughs> is Sax going down for all of this? How is this going to come about? Give us your theories. Give us your thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe. Give the video a like. Support us by checking those links <laughs> to the store, our Patreon, and we'll see you here next time.